Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist, and I've done nothing but orthodontics now for the, since 1970. I did orthodontics for several years before that, but I just stopped doing everything but orthodontics in 1970. And I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society. Now this is uh, a society of general and pediatric dentists, and our sole purpose is to teach orthodontics to general and pediatric dentists, or really any dentist that's interested in, it, in doing orthodontics. Uh, we are interested in teaching it to you and, and getting you to do good, I mean up the snuff, good orthodontics. We're not interested in any bunch of junk and how many cases you're doing and messing up, but we want you to do in really top-notch orthodontics. And if you're a, a dentist, and general dentist, pedodontist, or whatever, doing orthodontics, and you're not in the American Orthodontic Society, uh, you, you really need to be in some real strong group. You need lots of, you need numbers, uh, too, in there. But we're not interested in just the numbers. We want to get these uh, dentists trained properly. We have a, a boards, uh, and you work your way up to the boards through about four different steps getting there. And we encourage every member, if possible, go ahead and start working on these boards. They're going to be more important than you think in the future. Uh, so I'm, I'm pushing this pretty hard. Now, uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, jaw advancement cases. That probably doesn't mean much to you unless you've been in temporal mandibular joint disorders and working with that. And uh, for about the last 20, 25 years, I've done a lot of this in with your orthodontics. You cannot separate it from orthodontics, uh, there's no way. And uh, this old bull about orthodontics have nothing to do with orthodontics, it's just uh, crazy, see. And I can uh, show you. Now we're not gonna get into a lot of these uh, orthodontic TMJ cases today, but both of the ladies that I'm gonna show you today, we have treated them for temporal mandibular joint problems. And many of the TMJ uh, cases, you want to advance their mandibles and get them to a comfortable position for the mandible. And uh, advancing it is usually the way it needs to go. So you can question this stuff if you want to. And if uh, you're around, I'll talk with you about it. But I've treated a lot of them. And I worked with Dr. Charles Holt, who did nothing but TMJ work, and he would get them comfortable, and he'd send them over to me. After he got them comfortable, he said, now move their teeth around where their teeth meet, where I have a meeting on these plants. And that's where the tough orthodontics comes in. So this is not the simple type of orthodontics I've shown in a lot of cases. However, a lot of stuff I've shown you here is not simple. Uh, I don't really care too much about doing real simple stuff. I like to get in there where it really challenges you. You have to figure out what to do in the cases and work it out. But anyway, I'm going to show you these two cases where you can advance somebody's mandible and make them look so much better. I mean, it's just uh, in, in canny what it'll do. So I thought after working with Charles for a long time, uh, you could go in and do this advancement even if the person didn't have TMJ problem. It won't uh, bother at all. So let's get on in with it and I'll show you this uh, 
These are jaw advancement cases. Both of them have been uh, treated. It wasn't terrible TMJ problems, but they were pretty, pretty bad. Uh, now this case number one, this lady has a whole bunch of problems. She had a little TMJ problem. She's got a severe class two division one problem with a closed bite, and a, not a tongue thrust problem, and this needs her mandible brought forward. She's got a, a, a anatic, uh short jaw, see? so uh, that's going to be taken care of. So these cases get all involved. I mean, they've got four or five different problems coming up that you have to do. Now, you just can't go out here and learn how to stick a few brackets on teeth and stick a preformed arch wire in there and tie it down and say grace over it and expect the teeth to straighten up. Uh, you've got to learn something. So you'll have to come in and take a lot of courses and you have to read a lot and really study and get concerned about it if you want to do a good job of the orthodontics. And uh, that's what we are promoting in the, uh, the AOS. That's American Orthodontic Society. And I don't care what country you're in, you can join, but you don't learn orthodontics just joining. You have to attend a lot of postgraduate training and do a lot of work on your own to, to get there. And everybody in the U.S. should try to strive to pass these boards. They're going to be more and more important as time goes by. All right, that's, that's enough on that. Let me get into this. Here is a lady. This is 1980. Looks like 85 or 86. And she's definitely got a retrognathic jaw. Uh, I draw on these pictures. Sometimes a little tag comes up on there. But this lady would look a lot better if her chin were out here somewhere, you know. So, and if you advance her chin, you advance the, the fossa is something like that, you know, uh, back in here. And the condyle where they're having problem is usually back into the back part of rather the retrognathic tissue uh, there, but you can advance it out too. And that helps the cases. So when you bring the jaw out, and if you keep it out there over a period of a good many years, the thing will migrate and grow and change in position. One of the ladies, you couldn't get her jaw back after a long time. Now this lady got out there and it stayed after a long time. Now looking at it from the front, I mean, it looks bad. There's no question about it. Uh, she's a nice lady. She's intelligent, smart, and uh, she came and worked for us for a while. Uh, now, looking at her models, I mean, we can really show you how class two it is. This cuspid right here needs to go in that spot right there. If you look across here, the lower teeth are way up here in the roof of her mouth, you see. Now, you've got to bring them down and pick this up a little bit, but the lower the curvus V is coming like that, you know. So you're going to have to flatten that curvus V out, and then you can bring this jaw further forward. You can advance it, but you've got to straighten the little thing out before you come, uh, come forward. If you come out here and you bite, your teeth are hidden here, and your back teeth will be apart about that much back in the back. Uh, let's go now to the, just looking straight down on them. This was 1984 when I took these pictures. Her lower front teeth are chewing into her roof of her mouth right up there. See? I mean, I don't know how many millimeters. Look at 10 or 12 millimeters sticking out like that. And that's hideous. And that's going to be that way the rest of the woman's life unless you can go in there and do something with it. And once you learn how to do it, you can do it. And it's not some impossible job that you have to do to do this. Now you can 
make a tremendous difference in this person's life if you uh, learn the orthodox. Uh, it just makes a big difference. I had a good friend when I was over in Africa for three years, and he stuck out like that. And he was a fine guy. I mean, just a really wonderful guy. And I wanted to fix his teeth so bad. I thought I didn't know how to fix it. Now, I've come back and I know how to do it. We've lectured on it for years and shown people. But I've touched very few people. Now, this is generally known how to do these bad class 2 division 1 uh, cases. But uh, uh, now, people out there in the middle of the jungle somewhere can if they can get on, to get on the internet, they can pull this stuff down and we're going to show them how to do a lot of these things. I can't uh, go over everything that you do in orthodontics, but we'll, we'll go over a whale of a lot of it. So, okay, so here's the lady's cephalometric picture here. Uh, and she looks bad. Now her condyles are back up here in the back side of the fossa kind of crowding up where the what's called the retrodiscal area where there's a lot of there's a lot of blood vessels and nerves and your synovial fluid is all created back here and if you advance the condyle out to here somewhere and give this some room most people get along better with it now you can there'll be people arguing a bit of this but uh, I've worked on people for years now, working with Charlie Oakley, and I don't think it was anybody that do, we didn't help by permanently advancing their mantle and get it out there where they had plenty of space behind the, the condom. Uh, we're going to have to get into these TMJ cases, and that's going to be boring for some of you. But I tell you, you can't do good orthodontics if you don't know something about and how, how to get along with the teeth, temporal mandibular joint. You've got to learn something about it. If you're a dentist, you really need to know a lot about it. Okay, we leveled it out. Here it is later. This is 3780. I can't tell what it's 787. And this was. Uh, this was 85. I believe that's 5. Some of 85. But it didn't take us that long to get here. But uh, we probably didn't start on right at first. But anyway, we've got the jaw pretty well level across here. You see. The curvus V and the teeth hitting. Right here. And we flared them out some right here. That won't be quite that way when we uh, get uh, through with the case. Let's look at the other. Now you see the curves we went along like this. There's the upper the upper part of the lower front teeth is right in there. I mean just a tremendous bow. And uh, we'll go look at it. It's flattened out. So when you flatten it out you can advance the mandible and look where the chin is now right here. And let's go back and look where the chin was on the other, the earlier time. All right, here's the front part bone, and there's the chin. In other words, came forward about that much, or something like that. I'm not sure, but it, it came forward a lot. All right, this is further into the treatment. We've uh, we've advanced quite a ways here, and we've got her in a rectangular wire, and we've got the bite level the rectangular wire down on the bottom arch. Uh, also, uh, it's quite a ways down the line in the case. Uh, we've been there several several years now. Uh, well, not several years. It's a it's a couple of years. Uh, okay, we're coming on real good with it, and we've got the teeth all lined up, leveled out, the good stuff going on. Uh, now this this case had uh, 
Let me pause this just a minute. Pause button doesn't work. <laughs> All right, we had this lady. She was a tongue thruster, and we had these little wire hooks on the lower anterior teeth. That's why we banded them, and uh, that kind of irritates the tongue when you stick your tongue out. The tongue will just learn how to stay back, and you can break a lot of tongue thrust problems. We'll have some total videos on tongue trucks, how to take care of stuff, so you don't have to pick it up from here. Uh, now, we go and we used a cervical headgear also in trying to back the maxilla up, you see, and let the mandible come forward. We hook this up and goes around behind her neck on the cervical area back there, and we're backing it up from that side also. That looks pretty bad, but if you're in bad shape, you the uglier you look, the more you'll wear. And so she's willing to do this. And this is the, the headgear hookup in here. And we have it hooked to the back of the neck and pull it back on the upper arch. We had a lower lip bumper in here. We'll have to uh, I don't think we've got a whole lot of work uh, stuff here on lip bumpers yet, but we put these lip bumpers in and they don't let the lip, usually these people swallow wrong, pull back with their lip, you know, and they press back on this. It's hard to move the teeth forward if you don't run interference from them. You've got to have a vascular bed and the gum and everything for the bone and the teeth to move to the front of the mouth. So you put a lip bumper in and it runs interference. There'll be a millimeter or two of space between the inside of this lip bumper and the tissue in here. So the teeth can push up there. They don't have anything just pulling back on them. That takes this lip pressure that they have off of this lip bumper, transfers it back to this molar area back here. This pressure goes back to the molar. Then you come off the molars with a class 2 elastic from the molar up here. And you can actually back up the upper front teeth on somebody by using the lower lip. You take this pressure from here and push it back on the lower molars back here. You hook elastics to it and come up here. And you wear this lip bump all the time, then you wear the elastics all the time. Put it there. Now the headgear is just an additional force we use to take the maxillary tissue back like that. Now I'm right all over this stuff, so I kind of uh, show you what I'm talking about. I can't uh, tell you exactly, but I can show you a lot of time I'm drawing something. Uh, now here's the upper arch. It's definitely back, you see. We push that son of a gun back with this. Now, here's some little hooks, you see, where we were hooking up class 2 elastics on it. We're wearing them and the headgear shoving this thing backwards from the back of the neck and from that real tough lower lip. You see some adult that's been swallowing wrong all their life, and then they swallow wrong, they activate the uh, seventh cranial nerve, I believe it's the one that, that uh, muscle down there tighten the lip up. And they'll have a muscle that's so stout down there. I know you, you tried to scale the front teeth, they'll almost pick you up with their lower lip. It's uh, this tough. And uh, so you got to take that force, that lower lip, and use it, you see. So here we are again, just a, a view of this in 1987. 
Uh, this is upper and lower thing, 87. This is elastic chain. I was pulling this cusp back to rotate it some. And the regular arch wire coming in here, rectangle arch wire. We had these bands on the lower T with these little fingers. That's an old 3 old wire soldered and welded onto the back of these bands. That's what we use to break the VIP habit. We'll get in and show you some real stuff on VIP bumpers. It's, it's in a lot of the videos. Uh, all right. Here we are. Now this is 88, and we pretty well finished this lady out. You see, and got the teeth lined up, got her midline pretty well. Now don't worry about the midline, but I do worry about inner digitation. She's got a bridge here, and I think it screws up the inner digitation some. But we've got these cuspids right up there, and I showed you where the cuspids were way out here. We need to go back there with them. And then we brought this up some and this back some. Now we got the two right together. And you see how good the interdigitation is on the case coming back like that. Now the teeth look doggone good now at this point. And that's the lower teeth lined up. I know this shell, <laughs> this crown that cracked the enamel that they had on the metal or the crown off and looks pretty bad and well I guess I can get it fixed. I hope she can. Uh, here again. All right. Now we had advanced her mandible out there and kept it. But actually if I let her relax her mouth and went into what we call whatever you want to call centric relation, uh, that's just a word for where the jaw is, you know. But if I backed her jaw up as far as I could get it, I could get her cuspid there instead of coming down here. See? So it went, that's with me just pushing back on it and trying to back it up. But here's where she chews a centric occlusion where she goes out there and chews and the jaw is forward, the condyle is forward, and she doesn't have any TMJ problem when it's like that. And so this is good. And you can say what you want to about advancing mandibles. It is a good thing. Now some of the guys I know several years back just condemned that. But it is pretty well, well it's been proven boys. It's, I proved it to myself because I never saw anybody and I've hunted all my life. Some guy that had a his had a real forward slide when he closed. You see these people that try to close together. They got to slip their bottom teeth over the front teeth to get together. They don't even chew back there. And uh, those people just rarely ever have any TMJ problems. See, uh, I'll give some examples of that later on but we got a lot to cover on this these two cases all right we see this is a centric occlusion but you know when we have a lady come back and close and everything uh, she chews with her teeth in this interdigitation point that we had gotten her jaw forward and she'll stay there over a period of 10, 15 years, I'm ready to just get where she can't go back there with it. But they've got to do that. Now we've got a bunch of, uh, if somebody's got a lot of TMJ problem, you'd like to take transcranial x rays. Now we've got these fancy CT scan deals and things, but back in 786, we didn't have that. Well, there's where her condyle had come to. Now this condyle is broken down. It's had some bad uh, stuff up to this point because it's kind of squared off. It's no longer a nice little round head like that, and it's kind of squared off. But uh, this was where her centric occlusion was in 1986, and keeping it out there, her jaw pretty much the same place. The centric occlusion 
the head of the condyle had gone back. In other words, it's migrating back in here. Now I can go to what we call centric relation. I don't know what the, you don't know either, but the condyle now is back in this area back there. So we took these transcranials just to keep a record of where it was going, that bridge over there, and we put the, uh, this showed where we tied, actually we used the bridge like a big long tooth, and we tied to it like that. Now, we're about, we finished the thing now, it's 1888, and uh, this is the where we leave her with her centric relation of condyle back in the fossil there. So it has it has changed the shape of this condyle, the position of it, as far as we can tell in there. It 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 is either an eccentric occlusion. I got a bunch of the TMJ stuff from one side to the other and Messing with the transcranial x ray is nothing like doing your CT scan and stuff now. And this is for the uh, having a retainer in and retainer out. We put these retainers with big lamps on to keep them in there at night, and then small lamp they'd wear in the daytime. We'll have to show you a little more about that. I'm going to run through this because it won't be much to you till you really get into TMJ stuff. Okay, this is 1990 now, and we started out in 1984, that's the way it was. And she, her teeth look like that now. Oh, dirt, good looking set of teeth, you know. And prior to that, the lower teeth were up the roof of the mouth, had the big old gap over there like that. And that's 1990, so it's holding up pretty doggone good. And the cuspids are going down in that slot real good. The shape of the upper uh, looks quite good. It's expanded out, you see. The lower is expanded. Now here's the way she looked prior. You saw those early pictures we had of her here. Now here she looks out. Now, women will stand on their head to go from this to this, I tell you. If she wears that thing, keeps her chin out there, keeps it open, she looks so much better. I mean, they, uh, you don't have to twist their arm to make them put this stuff on and wear it. When they look this way, when her jaw's out there, and she looked this way before she started, see. Uh, they will not go without. They wear that. And they, when they do, it keeps the teeth out there and lines up the bites closed. And at night, she wears a retainer that has a big old ramp on it, kind of like a splint, you know. But in the daytime, she's got a small one in there. We use this little spring retainer. I don't like those things at all. Just go ahead and bond a wire distal with a distal from cuspid to cuspid uh, and it's much better than those spring retainers I don't like them. Now you can see the ramp here is just very small. Here the ramp goes all the way up here. There's no way she can bite her jaw back here. She has to slide up here to bite. If she keeps it up there long enough it'll actually grow up in that position. I don't have any double blind studies to, <laughs> to back up all this stuff I'm telling you. But I've done it so long that it's it's a blind study enough for me. Now there is the back of the ramp. You darn sure don't want them being able to bite back here and slide back and push it their jaw back further and that makes it even worse. And I've had that happen. Okay, here's uh, She's just going back just a little bit in that view. But that's as far back as you can get her jaw. This is 03. And we got, we were pushing these teeth back. We had to get them out and put a, make sure she wore this lower retainer. You see now she's had a bunch of bridge work. This is a mirror stuck in her 
mouse see and actually you're looking at these seeds down here this is just a mirror shot of it up here and you shoot the picture of the mirror uh, there and that gives you a good view of it as if you were standing right on top of it looking down and that's where she looked and that's where she went to and I'll bet you I mean you can get her tired to stay back there like that now here she is a good many years later she's put on a few pounds and she's done like a lot of a lot of us I mean she's gotten chunkier and everything she still looks nice her teeth are uh, nice she just uh, uh, gained a little weight and uh, you can't already I mean, you look around some days, there's a lot of people gaining a lot of weight, see. Uh, she looks awful serious there. I don't know why <laughs> somebody must need to goose her in the ribs there to take a picture of her, see. And there she is. But she's got a good profile now. And we have to advance that mantle, something like that. And that's pretty well the way she's going to be. I'll bet you when she's 95 years old. If she lives that long, she'll still be out there. All right, here's the second lady we did, uh, another class two lady. Now, she's out good. This is later on down here. And we stayed with her, and she came in for years after we finished. She was back like this, not as bad. Had a little TMJ problem, not a big problem, but we had to do the same little bit thing, and we're going to move this cuspid thing back like that see it's class two got about a uh, half as much class two though as uh, the lady prior to that and the depth of the bite is about half as bad uh, she's got a cross bite in here which no problem at all to spread out a dove she can take these big daddy wires you don't have to put a power separator in there if you want to we can just spread them out where we want them. You know, with that. They spread the other side, so you have to wear uh, elastics from the lingual of the upper down to the buckle of the lower. And it makes more of the force on this side. And it'll jump these teeth, but won't jump the others off the wrong side. Uh, a lot of you would be surprised how many people uh, don't know about that. Now we've got some crooked teeth. That's that, that means nothing, you know, that's just plain old simple orthodontics. They said you couldn't expand cuspids. Well, shoot, I showed you where you expand cuspids twice of what they are. They're still there 20 years later, see. Go back and look on those videos on expanding lower cuspids. And uh, I don't know, they did some research. They said uh, they always go back, but they do not. And it was a real fine gentleman did the research. I, I really think highly of him. And, uh, but I think what happened, they just tilted the cuspids back. They didn't bring the roots of them back. They just took the crown, brought back, and then it came back up. I, I'm pretty sure students in the school did it. That's what they did. They just spread the cuspids and then bring them. Because it takes a long time to bring the roots way back there and uh, they thought it was a big hurry and uh, just leaned them back and he didn't pick up that uh, flaw in it and here we run interference for them where we're bringing these out they're taking them down at the same time we'll put rectangle arch in there keep the torquing of the teeth correct as it goes forward this is just a lip bumper we've shown you. We'll show you how to make them if I don't. I think I may have some videos on that. I'll try to get that in there. You make your own. You put it in the auxiliary tube. We use double tubes on the lower motors, triple tubes on the upper. If you don't have those, it will help you greatly to change your six-year motor bands out like that. And then when you take this big daddy wire, that's what we're jumping this over with that. It's a simple, doesn't cost you anything, but people won't learn about it because it's not sold somewhere. If I could make it where you'd have to buy the darn thing 
and somebody would make money off of it, then they would advertise the heck out of it, and then you'd be using it, thinking it's great. It's cost you nothing. And I'll be darned people treat it like that. They don't realize what it is. It does more than some of the things you pay all kind of money to, to, to get. But when you expand the tooth, if the crown is leaning in like that and you expand it, it gets out of the root, it doesn't hurt. But if the roots are like this and now you expand it, you got to get the roots with the tooth. So you have to put buckle root torque in these posterior teeth back here. And your bracket slot is out like that. And you've got to take this arch wire, you see, and it'll have to be bent down this way. And now you twist it and shove it in this slot here. And that wire is going to want to go back like that. And it'll tend to bring the, the roots of the teeth over like that. But it'll also tend to bring the crown back. But then this blooming wire is so big and it's got so much force on it, it will not let the crown go back. And so the doggone roots go out here. So you don't want these to go wrong. So you put elastics out here to the inside of the lower. And yet here you get on the inside of the, the lower and bring your left. Oh, uh, sorry the inside of the upper and then you bring it to the outside of the lower. Now that's all Jim will erase all that. The the elastics go from inside of the upper up here to out here. And they wear these molar cross by the elastics. And that's pushing the elastics pushing it that way. And then you wear it from outside here, inside down to the lower, you see. And that's moving, the elastic's moving it this way, this way. The This big daddy arch wire, though, it's going this way, and it's going this way, just as much this way as it is this way. But the elastic changed the ball game. It's going to expand the thing come hell or high water. It will eat body live and breathing if you put it in their mouth. I mean, it will expand them. And if you put a good rectangle wire with a lot of buckle root torque in it on the side you want to go out and you hold this side, this side will move out and it will have the buckle root torque in it. Now a lot of this gets involved and people look at this and say, oh God, I can't learn that. But you can learn it. Orthodox is not a dead gum situation where you go in there and stick little brackets on teeth and then you buy you a package of these darn preformed arch wires and stick them in and think things are going to just straighten out without you even knowing what the heck you're doing and that's a bunch of bull and we want to lead you down that aisle in the American Orthodontic Society we got some darn good people that are teaching uh, orthodontics there. I've got out of it now. Too darn old to go and do that, but I found out about getting it on the internet. And so I'm putting this stuff out. And if you want to learn it, by God, you can learn it now. But you're going to have to work at it. But I, I'll show you how to get it done. And I hope to gosh people will learn it. And do it right. Don't, don't be straightening people's teeth up like a bunch of junk. I've got a good friend I just with him just the other day. He said, well, I wore braces when I was a kid. Well, his teeth are crooked as the devil now. See? They probably didn't straighten it right the first place, and they didn't retain it after they got it there. He wouldn't be there. He wouldn't be that way. And learn how to retain it good, see. Or I, I preach to you now. So, uh, anyway... I've got the second lady came on. We spread that all out, and I'm gonna run through this real quick because we have already been in here too long. Uh, so, 39 minutes. Somebody's got to watch on me over there. Uh, 
the lip bumpers, you need to learn how to use it. You need to learn headgear. You need to learn how to bend the cut picking arch wires and learn how to torque teeth with rectangular wires. These are great little brackets. They have wings on them and you can rotate anything with them pretty much. Now, bad rotations, I'm showing you how to put the chain around rotate, but those are excellent little brackets. They're Lang and Lewis brackets. Now these darn things may look good, but I don't like them. They don't <laughs> torque good, <laughs> and, uh, but they're pretty and don't see them much, but they're not near as uh, you can do a better job with a metal bracket. Now I didn't kill her that gum tooth here. It was that way when we started. It, you very rarely, I don't know of but maybe one tooth. It was on a lady work for me. We killed it there. Now here we put this ramp in here that she wore during the night time. So her jaw stayed in this position. It didn't, couldn't go back, you see. During the daytime, she could wear one of the little bitty ramp, and it stayed out there, and her jaw stayed there, and here's what she wore on her retainer. See, in the day, daytime, had a little bit of this. She could get back here in the daytime, but she won't, Well, she doesn't look good there, and it doesn't fit. When she comes up here, all of her teeth fit together so she can chew better, and so she stays up here in the day but at night you relax and go back in here and then your condyles won't grow or change shape as fast at night time it's here she can't get her bottom teeth back to this point even you don't want to get make these ramps short where they can get on the back side and then they clinch at night and that pushes their jaw back and that just really messes up things i'll tell you about that later it's Real nice patient was an oilman's wife came in from Dallas. We had her going good, and she got behind the ramp during the night and bit down. And she came the next morning. Her teeth were just killing her. I couldn't get her to get there when I tried to manipulate her jaw. But during the night, she got real relaxed and got her teeth back in here. And she bit down, and that shoved her jaw backwards. During the night, and boy, it made her joint just really flared up, and it was hurting when she got here. So I had to get her back forward again. All right, here's where the lady fit. We put a retainer in there. This is a little bit of acrylic. Makes this retainer wire stay right where you want it. You don't have, don't put any clasp, and darn sure don't run any wires across the occlusion of the teeth. You bite on the darn wire, and the teeth go one way during the day when you got it in, or night, and when you take it out, they go another way. Let the teeth erupt into each other, have a freedom move toward it, and come into each other. Now, here's the ramp we've got. I don't know whether that's the, looks like a day when it may be part of the night when I can't see. All right, that's 1993. I took these two women. To the Fort Worth District Dental Society at a table clinic one night. I set these two women down and showed them where we had advanced them out. I let every dentist that came in there, I had all kind of mirrors and tongue blades and lights and had a chairs for them and had their big pictures up there. They could see every cutting, picking thing about it to see what we did. We advanced their mandibles and they stayed out there. They had one surgeon came up. Well, what do you expect us to do, you know? Well, darn, you can get something else. You don't have to cut their jaws off to bring them out there because when you screw them back together, you don't know where the heck the condyle is going to be. And a lot of them have trouble with them after surgery. Now, some of them are good people and they know pretty much how to locate them. And I never did have too much trouble, but I have people that did. Now, here's... I don't know where we started. We had a little problem with that. And we got her out to there. That was 1988. These are her pictures in here. We, that's when we had the arch wire. We took her wisdom teeth. I didn't take them, but sent her out to get her. Condyles were out forward like that. And they got to where her condyles were back, you know, just stayed back. 
half century conclusion of 1988. Uh, now this lady stayed out there so good after she had been, she came back in after 20 more years and you couldn't get her jaw back. And it, it was just there, period. And I had an oral surgeon, a good friend of mine, an oral surgeon, he said, well, that works good and everything, but it won't stay there. Well, it'll stay there if you keep them there long enough. If you keep it out there, now she wore her tail. Well, she stayed in there. You can see the track. And it's her day retainer. You can hardly see the ramp. And that's, she fit in. That's where we had her teeth bonded together on the bottom. And it stayed. Now, that's 18. I hope I've got some people. That was 93. Uh, 93, she was still there. There she's gotten old and gray-headed and everything. That's 96. Uh, 96. Uh, that was 86, you see. Or it's, it's out there, see. 96, 96. Here's some later on down the line. I hope I got a date on that. I don't see it. But I've got some 2000. Way on up. That's 2007. She's still out there. 2007, that was 86, 2007, it's, it's out there. You can't get her jaw back. There it is, 86, 7 new. That's the lower arch there. That was 86. Anyway, she is back there. And I'm going to end this uh, video, and that's a good one for you to look at. I don't know if much. Can't get it to stop. Oh, I have to click it.